Our next speaker is the chairman of our tribe, David Lopeman, and he's joined with James Peters, who's a councilman as well for Squawks and Island Tribe. And I will say that when I spoke to him right after the family had called, Dave Lopeman said, tell us what to do. David? Thank you, Bob. You know, we're all going to miss this great man. Uh, I always considered him chief, chief of all of us, because that's what he had done through the lifetime that uh, he's been there. And I know he's sitting up there with some great chiefs right now, looking down and smiling, and did I make that many friends? <laughs> so, you know, it's an honor for uh, the family to uh, choose Squaxin Island to do this great thing for the family. And my hands go up to Billy's family and all of you. And I asked Jim to come up. Jim worked with him a little closer than I did, but I remember uh, seeing all the boats and that down there coming through the freeway when I worked in fisheries and looked down there and said, oh, they're having to fish in again. So me and my wife went down a couple of times, but we could never get close. Our heart was there, and well, I support all the work that everyone has done to get us to where we're at today. You know, we forget about the other small people, the clerks, the ones who answer the phones. All of you have got a part of this that's helped, and through the, all the tribes, Northwest Fish Commission. I'm going to miss this man a lot, as we all will. I like uh, our other past chairman. Uh, Jim Peters say a few words. So thank you again for letting me say a few. Quote. Thank you. I want to thank the family. Uh, it's, it's an honor um, to be asked to put this on uh, for your dad, and um, we, we will always remember him. Uh, one thing I want to remind everybody here, um, we have a responsibility being here today. We need to witness this. We need to carry this forward to the people that weren't able to be here. We need to continue to tell people that weren't here, teach them what you've heard, um, the fellowship that is happening here, the friends that have been able to come together and to honor um, Billy and his family and go forward. The other thing that we need to remember was it's not all about just today or uh, yesterday. It's about our future. And one of the things I had the privilege to do numerous times was to go to schools. He could never say no to go talk with the kids. Um, doesn't matter how, how he was feeling, how tired he was. That was one of his things. It was passion to go talk, talk with those kids. He was a leader of our generation, uh, kept, us, kept us worker bees going, um, and he did that. And he always mentioned our grandma and grandpas, remember what they taught us, continue those teachings. He was a multi-generational type of leader, and we got to take that on for him. And I want to just thank you. Thank you to the family. going to introduce um, one of Squaxin Island's two congressmen, um, Derek Comer. I, I've, um, he's here to speak today. It won't be on your program. We've adjusted. And um, I like the congressman. He doesn't yell at me like Norm Dix used to. Well, <clears throat> there's still plenty of time for that. But, uh, <laughs> First, I, I want to say thank you uh, to the Frank family for allowing me the honor of, of speaking a little bit about Billy, and it truly is an honor. Uh, I, I confess uh, with some level of embarrassment that I'm not confident that, uh, uh, that Billy knew my name. 
And I, I say that largely because uh, for most of our relationship, he referred to me as Jesus Christ. I, I hope no one takes offense at this. I feel a little like Bill Cosby talking about his father here. But um, from the moment we met, when I was a young, wet behind the ears legislator in Olympia, he would always give me a hug, give me a slap on the back, and say, Jesus Christ, it's good to see you. <laughs> Pretty sure he thought I was a, a, a new intern. Uh, but nevertheless, he was always so friendly and so quick to embrace me. Just a few weeks ago, uh, we had a, vi a visit a tribal summit with the tribal leaders from the 6th Congressional District that included uh, Secretary of the Interior, Sally Jewell. And Billy came up to me as, as things were coming to a close. He put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Jesus Christ, what a great event. <laughs> in, <laughs> in all seriousness, though, uh, I didn't know Billy as, as well as many of the people here, but I'm so grateful for the time I got to spend with him. One of the first lessons that I learned from Billy during my interactions with him was the power of listening. We'd sit in these meetings together, and although he knew more than most anyone in the room and he always had pointed to say, he was rare, rarely the first to speak. I thought that was so powerful. There are a lot of themes, uh, as I think about Billy's life, uh, that fit that bill. His passion. I think that's what most of us love the most about Billy. Through his years of advocacy and tribulations, he earned an incredible platform to deliver a message. And when called upon, he could sure drive that message home. At the tribal summit with Secretary Jewell just a few weeks back, Billy was on fire. There wasn't a soul in that longhouse that wasn't locked into his words. He gave us a call to action because he believed that the stakes were too high to sit still. That's something he believed his entire life. He believed in equality, he believed in sovereignty, he believed in the responsibility of saving the salmon, he believed in the responsibility of saving Puget Sound, and now our task is to put those beliefs into action. I was fortunate to hear him talk about the world through his eyes, how protecting our natural world and everything that depends on it was not a political issue to argue over but rather an innate calling. Billy once said, right now, all of us, we're the advocates for the salmon, the animals, the birds, the water. We're the advocates for all of society. So what you do is, you do what you can in your lifetime. Then that'll go on to another lifetime, then another, and then another. You gotta think of your grandchildren's children and what they will need. When I was in Washington, D.C. on Friday, I gave a speech on the House floor honoring Billy's life. And the first thing that I shared with my colleagues uh, and with the viewers on C-SPAN was a moment uh, that I had a few weeks back. We had a uh, meeting with, the, uh, with Billy and with the Indian Fisheries Commission staff uh, up uh, with the Puyallups at their new youth center. And Billy was incredibly thought-provoking that day. He shared with us, I was with uh, my, my colleague and roommate, Denny Heck, he shared with us uh, a statistic that I found very alarming. He said, you know, prior to the Bolt decision, we got 2% of the catch. After the Bolt decision, we get 50% of the catch, but it's fewer salmon now than it was then. As we walked out uh, and headed to the car, I said to my staff member, Joe Daka, we were walking to the car, and I said, just hold on for a second. And he said, what's up? And I said, let's just stand here for a moment. And he said, what's on your mind? And I said, can we just think about how cool it is that we just got to spend a few hours with Billy Frank? I guess that leads me to the final theme uh, that I think about today, and that was Billy was the ultimate servant leader. In everything he did, he spoke about the we. You know, Billy was a famous and accomplished man, but he remained true to his mission, serving his people and protecting a way of life rather than advancing his own career or chasing fame and fortune. And that's the mark that Billy left on so many people. He humbly let us look at that world through a different prison. He led me to have a greater appreciation for this beautiful part of the earth. He led me to be better at my job. He led me to be a better father to my girls. He led me to listen first and speak second. 
So I jo join every speaker this morning, every person in this great hall, and so many more on this earth who count themselves <clears throat> as lucky to have known Billy Frank. I will miss him dearly. I will never forget the lessons he taught me. And as a proud Christian man, I thank God and Jesus Christ that I met him. Thank you. <laughs>